my name is Sarah and this is Emmy and I have just finished making my wedding dress and I'm moving on to my wedding reception dress it's more of like the dance party dress but to show you why it's really exciting we're gonna have to wait a few more hours okay it is night now but you can't see me at all because it's dark except I have the fabric <laughs> is this not the coolest fabric ever I have fiber optic fabric and I am so excited to use this. Given that my entire sewing room is windows and not exaggerating in the slightest, I think I'm going to be sewing this at night because this is super cool. <laughs> Let's get started. Although I think I might turn the lights back on for a bit. Here is my quick sketch. I'm going to use my favorite pattern. S8979 with some minor adjustments. But my plan is basically to do a gathered rectangle for the skirt uh, and a belt and a bit of fun zigzag there. I didn't do that. So the way that fiber optics work is, yeah, so I was really too excited to explain anything there. So I'll take over now. Fiber optics use thin plastic or glass fibers to transmit light from a light source. In this case, it's an LED. The light bounces around on the inside of the fiber unless it meets an imperfection like a scratch on the surface which lets light escape. And in this case of the fabric, this is a good thing. These optical fibers are woven into the fabric as the weft, which is this part. Okay, so last night I was trying to cut the fabric because I'm determined to do it fully in the dark so you can get the full effect, but my pattern is translucent. And also, I don't have any lining fabric, so I have to go to Joanne's today. The dog is on the way to the Joanne's, which is pet friendly, so we're gonna have a bit of an adventure. Do you wanna go to the park? Yeah? Come on, Amy. Girl. I forgot to record in the store, but we now have solid white satin and some cotton lining. I love that our Joann's is dog friendly. It does mean that I shop there more often and buy more stuff, so you know, it's working. A lot of this video is going to be voiceover because I am embroidering the skirt as we speak, and yeah, that's kind of important, so. This fabric feels like a normal fabric in one direction, but it is very stiff in the plastic fiber direction for obvious reasons. I rolled out the fabric to see what I'm working with here. I don't remember how much I bought. I ordered this seven months ago on Black Friday and I had such a hard time keeping a secret. Four yards. Four yards. So this is not gonna be distracting at all. <laughs> Each battery pack has 10 LEDs on it and I need to measure how long one battery pack is. Ideally would like to use like one for the bodice and one or two for the skirt, but we'll see. This is so cool. <laughs> my best friend thought it was really cool too. And if you think my watch is broken now, just wait. The first thing I did with the white satin was iron it as it was fairly wrinkled. I cut out the bodice pieces from the satin and also the cotton lining. I'm not really sure what to call the satin layer here because it's not really the outside fabric, but it's also not the inside fabric. It's like the meat of the sandwich. Okay, I had a whole thing written for making the organza yoke, but it was very long and it doesn't light up, and that's not why you're here, so we're just gonna skip it. Also, I wanted to say that at this point, I was less than a month from my wedding, and I had one of three dresses finished, so I was getting rather stressed and tired. The yoke? It's done! So I'm going to assemble the lining now and then everything else has to wait till after dark because that is like the whole point of this project. <laughs> I chose this pattern because the princess seams aren't too curvy which is important for the fiber optic fabric. You can sew through it but if you bend the fibers too much the light won't pass through as well. Also I was nervous about working with this fiber optic fabric and I wanted a pattern that I'm familiar with. You may recognize it from this and this and this and maybe this. I finished part of the lining, most of the lining, as I have a dog staring at me. She wants to go for a WLK now, but it's pouring. I think I'm gonna have to wait. You're being very dramatic. I'm gonna have to wait until the dark out to keep going on this project. So, see you in a few hours. Once it was dark out, I stitched the seam allowance into boning channels just in case I wanted boning later, which I did. The satin pieces I cut out earlier were also translucent. Hmm. So I played around with the light settings until... I think the solid red is gonna help. Also, the matte side up was much more visible. So I'm gonna use this as the actual stitching lines because if I cut here, these fibers up here will no longer light up. So I'm gonna cut straight lines around the bodice and use this, the satin, as the 
actual stitching lines. See how it's dark where I cut? The fibers won't transmit light when they are severed. This fabric is so cool! I roughly cut out the area of the bodice pieces. I did line the pattern pieces up in order, just so the fibers didn't get too tangled during assembly. I found it easier to slide the blades down the fibers to cut the fabric without cutting the fibers. This is not gonna work. Better. All right, time to baste. I'm basting the fiber optic and satin fabrics together so they act as one piece with wires on one end. I also left it on a solid color to be less distracting than rainbow mode. That didn't last long. Everything is basted together. Uh, sewing this stuff is super easy. It's basically like a slightly stiff fabric. I've also been having a bit of trouble with these things tangling <laughs> and I keep losing my tools in the darkness, so you know. My best friend just said, at least it's more understandable than losing the tools in the light because at least this time I have an excuse. <laughs> anyway, time to pin. This is gonna be tricky in the darkness because I need to make sure that the satin is on the inside, but I still have to pin the edges together. I think I'm gonna turn the lights on and double check this before I stitch. The fabric wasn't the easiest to ease around the princess seams, but I got it done. I really wanna post about this on Instagram, but I'm not supposed to be posting anything about this because Petter doesn't wanna see it. That's a struggle. <laughs> I had a bit of a problem there because all of a sudden I was in the dark. It's because the battery died. <laughs> it's okay, they sent me a bunch more. I got this fabric from Lumi Sonata, in case you're wondering. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so much fun. <laughs> oh no, I just put my pin down in the dark. This is the freaking coolest fabric ever. <laughs> When I was walking with Emmy today, uh, I noticed that my neighbor's car window was down and it was raining, so I went over to talk to them. And they mentioned that they can see me when I'm sewing in here, so I wonder what they're thinking right now. Because I've been walking around in my skin-colored corset, which from afar probably looks like I'm not wearing anything. But I really am. Enjoy this beautiful rainbow pinning session. It's really awesome that it does rainbows, but it's a little distracting. After a lot of rainbow pinning, it's time for rainbow sewing! The instructions that I hadn't actually read yet said to sew slowly. Hi! <laughs> What's up? Do you need a matching fiber optic dress too? Comment if you think she does! Uh, this is still incredibly awesome, so I guess I uh, need to sew in the lining now. I wonder if I can iron this stuff, actually. I looked that up. Do not iron. <laughs> so the answer on that is no. No ironing. I did a little test sample sewing it to a lining fabric and folding it over as I would be doing, and it's fine. Which is good, because this is kind of sharp, and I don't really want that touching my skin anywhere. <laughs> I frequently have a little test sample that you don't see on screen, that's just usually hanging off screen uh, when I'm making stuff, but this one has to be attached still for obvious reasons, so you actually get to see it this time. Time to add the cotton lining. I usually choose natural fibers to be against my skin, as it is more comfortable. Not that this dress ended up being very comfortable, but given that there's plastic fibers, wires, and battery packs all over, that was just inevitable. Also, I wanted those wires and battery packs to be in the same place. I have the fiber bundles at the waist seam for the bodice and the skirt. Funny story about this pattern. I turned my mom's wedding dress into my bridal shower slash leaving the venue dress. And at this point in time, I had already finished that dress and about a month ahead of this one. And they're identical. Same pattern, same skirt shape, same everything. But I didn't realize it until I filmed the reveals on the same day. <laughs> Whoops. But it's definitely my favorite pattern. Also, side note, while I was writing this script, I discovered that I literally did the same thing again with my Cinderella's mini wedding dress, which would make it three wedding dresses that I based off of this pattern. I flipped the lining to the back side. According to the pattern, I should have put the organza top part in here, but given that this fabric is new, 
I think I'm just gonna hand stitch it to the lining instead because that would be easier. This is something that normally I would iron away, but that's not an option. Um, you're standing on my fabric again. But this is like the most expensive fabric I've ever had. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Why don't you go lay down in? No. Okay, girl. According to my little doodle here, I want to have a big bow on the back. And so I've got a bit of a mock-up here. If this is how big I want my bow to be, it's just about two LEDs worth of fabric, but I need four because it's one for each side. So if I cut that off, then I can use basically the rest of it for the skirt. And you can see that I'm not making any dead fibers with this cut because I'm cutting along the fibers and being careful. This stuff is so cool. I really wanna buy a bunch more and make a princess dress out of this, but that is not the current plan. This is my wedding dress. Well, wedding reception dress. I mean, I'm not sure this lighting is very flattering to you. Oh, okay, bye. I folded this in half long ways and pinned it. At first, I thought this fabric wasn't hard to deal with, but right around here, things started to change. Ah. Tangled in the bodice. You may have noticed that the latest sketch isn't the first sketch, but I changed my mind. It's my design after all. I decided to add a giant removable bow to the back. I struggle to turn this tube right side out without bending the fibers too far. So I folded it in half with two folds so the center is aligned with the edge. I need to make sure that I can get at both of the LEDs because then I can light it up from two sides, which would make it even brighter. That is one giant bow. <laughs> I am very proud to announce that I lit my needle that you definitely cannot see by the light of my fabric, which is an odd sentence. <laughs> I definitely meant threaded my needle there. I ran a loose running stitch down the center and pulled on the thread to gather into the bow. All right, I need a ribbon. I can't see anything in the dark. I tied this with some twill tape. For the bow center, I used another piece of fiber optic fabric. Shocking, I know. To check how long I wanted the skirt to be, I pinned it to the dress form. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Around this long, so there's extra for a matching dog dress. This is so cool. <laughs> Can't say we're off to a good start this evening because I embroidered through my finger and then had to... I bought her a crinkly avocado and toast. I'm regretting that slightly. And then I had to cut the bloody section out of my embroidery, so. I'm gonna work on the skirt tonight. I'm gonna work on attaching the skirt and the bodice tonight. Hopefully things will go better than they already have. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh my gosh. My watch. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> uh, uh oh. <sighs> this is not good. If you've ever wondered what's on the inside of a Fitbit, here you go. <laughs> this is not good. Anyway, um, this is the mark for a quarter. Don't even think about stepping on this. Nope. <laughs> Come here. Hi. This is the mark for the quarter locations on the skirt. I was gonna cut here, so it's two quarters in the back and two solid quarters in the front. Um, and I was gonna cut here to do pockets so I can have the controllers in pockets. Guess my watch didn't want to be part of that. <laughs> anyway, um, it feels silly to cut holes in this, but I kind of need pockets, so. Can't forget the pockets. Phone sized, of course. I freehanded a pocket shape, but definitely leave more room for your hand than I did. And I left some holes for the battery wires. I cut a rectangle skirt from the satin and cut two quarters off so I can add the pockets. I wanted to check the appropriate length on me, so obviously I did this. Not the most dignified thing I've ever done. I trimmed it vaguely near ankle length for now. This fabric cut is so cool. Am I a Jedi with fabric? 
This is just enough for a dog dress or comment any other ideas. I also did the same thing to the fiber optic skirt so I could access the pockets from the outside. I felt a bit silly cutting this and then seaming it back together, but I really needed the pocket. This pocket pinning is gonna be a little bit more tricky than usual because, you know what, I was too stressed here to make any sense, but I pinned the pockets onto both sides of the side seams. I stitched just the pocket hole down. Isn't this the most beautiful pocket stitching ever? I stitched it so the pocket lining wouldn't show. I put one side seam together and stitched around the pocket and down the seam of the fiber optic fabric. I wanted to keep the satin layer separate. Don't forget the wire holes. My poor finger. It turns out embroidering through your finger really hurts. Somewhere along here is where I started changing my mind about this fabric being easy to work with. I think things would have been different if I wasn't so stressed and on a tight deadline. I pushed the fiber optic fabric out of the way to sew the satin together. I pleated the side with all of the optical fibers sticking out, which made a huge mess of fiber bundles. I think I'm gonna turn the lights on for the rest of this because it does have to match on the other side. Good morning, well, afternoon. I spent my morning getting a new watch. I was looking at the old one and I'm pretty sure the adhesive just gave out. Like it was six years old, so. It wasn't damaged any more than it was before. It was just really old. Back to work on the fiber optic dress. I did decide instead of trying to pleat the very bulky satin, I'm just gonna do a big dart on the side front and the side backs uh, and then just taper it out to be a rectangle skirt at the bottom. And so I did that, but you're here to see the fiber optic fabric, so I'll just skip ahead. That is not supposed to be there. Aren't you a hunting dog? I did decide to add boning. To finish the bottom edge, I flipped the fiber optic bundles up without bending them too sharply. Remember, if they're bent too much, they won't transmit light anymore. Before Patrick left tonight, he told me to be careful and not stab any more fingers while sewing in the dark. It's time to hand sew in the dark. <laughs> oh no, I lost my needle. This is just a bad idea. Okay, I found it. Wish me luck. I hand stitched the edge just to the satin and not through to the front. elected not to try and re-thread my thread in total darkness. I'm pretty good at sewing, but I'm not that good. So this looks pretty good, but you can see the LEDs through the fabric. So I think I'm not gonna fully close the bodice today. I don't have any fabric that's like light proof. <laughs> Yes, you do, Sarah. Uh, I've never had this problem before. I'm going to put loops here to tie up the back with loops because I'm not sure I really want to risk a zipper and then maybe I'll make a light up modesty panel or just not bother. Yeah, so that was overly ambitious. So I skipped it and went about adding ribbon loops. I cut out some twill tape and pinned it along the skirt as a waistband, and I am struggling with all of the fibers getting tangled, and thus my dream of making a full princess dress from this fabric died. Unless the company wants to send me a bunch with no deadline. All that's left on this is putting in the zipper. In case you can't see it in the dark. I'm going to put the zipper just in the satin layer, and then this, I folded the edge over before I stitched it in. It's just gonna hang out somewhat neatly pressed like that. And I'm going to stitch the seam down the rest of it. I'm getting really sick of these things getting tangled in my machine and all over the foot. I don't think I have much machine sewing left on this though. It's mostly just gonna be this and then hand stitching. I stitched the seam below the zipper on the satin and fiber optic fabrics. I pinned the zipper just to the satin layer and I was getting really sick of the fibers catching on my machine. So I hand stitched the zipper in. This is not the neatest stitching, but it's going to be dark, so maybe people won't notice. I also hand stitched the fiber optic fabric edge since I can't iron it. We have a skirt! Woo. This pile right here is some blackout curtains that I've been using as drop cloths for a few years, so they're covered in paint, but they block out light. Just gonna go with that. <laughs> I made a third copy of the bodice and stitched the blackout curtain to the seam allowance at the top. Ideally, I should have done this way earlier. 
I tucked it into the bottom edge and folded the lining over that mess, trying to smooth out wrinkles and wires. I miss working on easy fabric, or at least fabric that didn't take a ton of thought. And yes, I am basking in the light of my giant bow here. I'm really tired. I found the yoke and I pinned it to the cotton lining. I hand stitched it down. Nobody's gonna look at the inside of this dress when the outside is so cool. I'm gonna put the bow on with white hooks and eyes so that it's removable, but also you won't be able to see it very well. I marked four contact points with my disappearing ink pen for the hooks and eyes. This was so that I can wear the dress without the bow, just in case it was annoying. I'm trying to open this oh, in the dark without doing that. That is unfortunate. Sewing in the dark is in general a terrible idea. Ow. Point made. I stitched the hooks onto the bow and the eyes onto the bodice. I was trying so hard to not stab myself in this darkness. No. I remembered my glow-in-the-dark pajamas this time, but I guess I didn't charge them. Here's what they look like charged. And boom, an oversized bow. Completely over the fibers tangling in the machine, I sewed the cotton waistband on by hand. But it was so very thick, it might have just been easier to use the machine. I folded the giant waistband over and hand stitched it. And I've got to say, this is the ugliest waistband I have ever made, but I didn't want to break the fibers. I put the cable through the pocket hole. Pocket power! Literally. I'm gonna have to try this all on later and see about the length because this is awesome, but I was picturing like T-length, which is like mid-calf. Plus, I wanna dance. And this is not good for dancing. <laughs> Hi, Amy. She's very good at being in the way. Thank you. I trimmed it to be mid-shin length. I used my hem marking tool as a vague guide and just went for it. Still the prettiest fabric cutting ever. I also trimmed and hemmed the satin layer, but it didn't light up, so I didn't film it. I wrapped black electrical tape around the spare LEDs so they wouldn't show. I did make a modesty panel for the back, but not in the fiber optic fabric. And it's time for the reveal! Stick around after for my final comments. on while the dress is on in the dark. Oh, I love it. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. After filming the reveal, which was before my wedding, I did stitch the bodice and the skirt together. Okay, so let's see. It's two nights before, no. Yeah, it's two nights before my wedding. And I finally got the app on my phone because I've got other stuff to do. <laughs> and look at this. <laughs> Try LEDs are really fun. I am a science nerd, by the way. In case you didn't get that. Anyway, so, I'm ready for my wedding now. And I have to say, this was a huge hit at my wedding. Everybody loved it. Everybody wanted a picture. It was really great for the dance party. The DJ turned the lights down really low, so I really stood out. It was awesome. <laughs> If you enjoyed this fiber optic dress video, hit the like button and subscribe and maybe watch the rest of my non-color changing wedding dress videos or maybe this video here. See you guys next time. This is so cool. <laughs> okay, I'm done now.